all of you myself dr smita parek faculty of microbiology at manvi education society science college so today we are going to learn the practical from ty bsc semester 6 microbiology practical the aim of the practical is fermentative production of amylase and its activation so basically this practical going to be divided into different part the first part is the fermentative production of amylase whereas second part is uh, estimation of uh, enzyme activity right so first of all understand what is fermentation why we are performing fermentation so as the name suggests here we want to ferment here we want to ferment the amylase production first let's understand the definition of fermentation what is the need of fermentation right so fermentation is the metabolic process of transformation of organic substance with the help of enzyme and anaerobically anaerobically means in the absence of oxygen our organisms going to produce enzyme and that particular enzyme going to degrade organic substance into product so with this particular fermentation technology we are going to produce amylase enzyme so the question is why we want to focus on amylase production why we need the amylase production in bulk amount because as we all know amylase is the main enzyme for baking industry then wine and beer making industry then many analytical industry in research and development of program using this particular enzyme so there is a vast need of this particular amylase enzyme so here we are going to learn how we produce this amylase production with the help of fermentation so part one is basically on fermentative production of amylase right fermentative production of amylase so first of all for the production of amylase we need such a bacterial and fungal species which are able to produce this amylase enzyme so the first task is to screen those bacteria or those fungal species which can produce this amylase enzyme then how to screen those uh, bacterial and fungal species for amylase production then we uh, then we need starch plate basically this starch plate contains starch in the agar medium so the enzyme which has potential to produce amylase enzyme that can secrete this amylase enzyme outside the cell and and then this amylase enzyme degrade this starch into degrade this starch into glucose monomer and now this glucose monomer is the simple carbon source so that this organism can uptake this simple carbon source and uh, multiply right so the organism which gave the zone of clearance on starch plate are amylase positive organism and then this is how we come to know that many bacterial species in the bacteria and many aspergillus species in the fungus are amylase positive so once you have screened this bacterial and aspergillus species we need to preserve this species on the slant right so once we have slant which is having this amylase positive species then we need to activate the culture by growing them in the tannous medium so now the question is what is tannous medium tannous medium basically contains starch in its composition as a carbon source right so first of all we need 50 ml tannous medium then we need to inoculate this isolated amylase positive organism into this tannous medium and allow it to grow for overnight so that we uh, we will have a multiplication of number of bacteria or fungal cells right then after uh, overnight culture we need to transfer this 5 ml of culture into the 150 ml fermentation flask right now what is the fermentation flask fermentation flask again contain tannous tannous non synthetic medium which for the start is a start as a carbon source right so once we have transferred 5 ml of culture into the 150 ml of fermentation medium then incubate it at 30 degrees celsius at 120 rpm 
pm for 3 to 4 days right so in this during this 3 to 4 days organism uh, survive on starch by producing alpha amylase right and the alpha the role of alpha amylase is to degrade the starch into the glucose simple carbon source right so then after fermentation we need to aseptically transfer 10 ml of fermentation medium and centrifuge it to separate the cell mass now in the supernatal we have amylase enzyme so after 3 to 4 days of fermentation of alpha amylase production we need to check amylase activity with the help of assay system so part 2 is part of practical is assay system that is the estimation of amylase enzyme so how we how we will check the enzyme activity how we will check the alpha amylase enzyme activity then we need to take three different flasks and label them as class number 1 class number 2 and class number 3 in all the three class first of all we have to add phosphate buffer so the need of phosphate buffer is to resist the change in the ph of amylase enzyme right so kya hota hai koi bhi biological molecule hota hai that we need to be supposed to maintain its ph right so if ph change then enzyme denature denature is safe so we don't want the denaturation of enzyme right so basically we need to maintain the structure of three dimensional functional structure of amylase with the help of addition of phosphate buffer so basically the role of phosphate buffer in this particular assay system is to resist the change in the ph right so the second one is to we need to add starch as a substrate because the enzyme is amylase the substrate will be starch so we are taking 0.1% starch solution so remember this thing black class number 1 will act as a blank here right so in blank we are not adding substrate but in class number 2 and 3 we are adding this substrate 2 ml each right third is 0.01 normal acid we will going to add this 2 ml of 0.01 normal acid in all the three flasks then the fourth thing is distilled water in order to make up the volume instead of starch substrate in class number 1 we are going to add 2 ml water then now the turn is to add active enzyme right so active enzyme we are going to add this active enzyme in class number 3 and the last thing is inactive enzyme inactive means the structure is denatured it's no more going to degrade the starch so how we are going to inactivate the enzyme we are going to inactivate the enzyme at 80 degrees celsius for 15 minutes in water bath what we need to do we need to take sufficient amount of fermentation medium and allow it to treat for 80 degrees celsius for 15 minutes in water bath so at higher temperature enzymes get denatured right so basically it is inactive enzyme it is not uh, it will no longer going to degrade the starch substrate right so in inactive enzyme we are going to have this inactive heat inactivated enzyme in class number 1 and class number 2 then after we are going to incubate uh, all the three flasks in at 35 degrees celsius in water bath for 15 minutes then after 15 minutes we are going to add iodine solution concentration is 0.001 normal that is 4 ml in all the three flasks so and then at final volume we adjust with the water that is 100 ml in each flask so basically how this as a system work we are incubating substrate that is starch and enzyme together for 15 minute right so during this period of time and the active enzyme will degrade starch into the simpler glucose molecule right so number of starch molecule are less in class number 3 Whereas in so in class number three, uh, class number two, class number two, we are adding inactive enzyme. So inactive enzyme uh, structure is denatured, so it is not going to act on our substrate starch. So uh, all the amount of starch that we have added in class number two will remain as it is. So upon addition of iodine, it is going to react with starch and give the blue color, right? And the Case uh, flask number one, we have not added starch, right? And we are only adding inactive enzyme. So upon addition of iodine, iodine not going to act with starch because starch is absent in flask number one. So after.
subtract the OD of class number one from class number two and class number three. Reason is we uh, we obtain a little blue color in class number one. That is because of residual starch present in one ml inactive enzyme. So whatever color obtained due to this residual starch present in inactive for uh, enzyme is to be subtracted. So for this particular purpose, we are subtracting OD1 from class number 2 and class number 3. So E0, E0 will be OD2 minus OD1 and ET will be OD3 minus OD1. So in both the cases, we have subtracted class, one number, uh, class number 1 OD from both the class. Then now it's time to calculate enzyme activity. The formula for enzyme activity will be E0, E0 minus ET divided by E0 multiplied A. A means the concentration of substrate. Then T means incubation time. V means volume of enzyme. A to 1000 means converting this enzyme activity in liter. Right? So now let's understand this thing. A is the substrate concentration. So we uh, we have taken 0.1% starch. 0.1% starch means 0.1 gram in 100 ml. That is 100 milligram in 100 ml. So we have taken 2 ml of starch. That means 2 milligram in 2 ml. Right? So we need to multiply substrate concentration A. That is 2 milligram. Right? But we are not multiplying it with 2 milligram. Rather we are multiplying it with 12.35 micromole of amylose. Because the truth is alpha amylase basically degrade the amylose of starch and not the amylopectin of starch. So the actual substrate on which enzyme is going to work is this concentration of amylose. So the actual concentration of amylose in 2 mg of, of starch is 12.35 micromolar. Then the volume of starch is volume of starch is 2 ml. Right? Then time of incubation is 15 minutes. Right? Then put the all the value, right? Calculate the E0 and E T and then put all these values in this formula of enzyme activity and you will get the answer in the for, in the unit of unit per liter per minute. Because enzyme definition of enzyme activity itself says that that uh, transformation of one micromole substrate into product per ml per minute is noted as unit, right? Here we are uh, calculating the enzyme activity in liter. So basically we are multiplying whatever answer comes with 1000, right? So this is how we are going to check the enzyme activity on day 1 after uh, 24 hours. So similar process, similar assay system will be prepared for next for 20, 48 hours and 72 hours also. And this is how we are checking the production of enzyme activity. As the principle says of our fermentation production of amylase, as the organism multiply, it will uh, utilize this starch as the carbon source. Right? So, if organism have to utilize starch as a carbon source, then it have to produce amylase. It have to secrete the amylase enzyme in the fermentation medium. So as the time goes increases, production of amylase also increases. So after, so the result of amylase activity from day to day will be increased. So here we have shown the color production from three different flasks. This is flask number one where we have not added any starch substrate, right? So I am not going to act with starch, not going to react with starch. So the blind color is as you can see right then we have class number two in which we have added inactive enzyme remember we have added inactive enzyme so it is not going to activate starch right so starch will remain as it is and going to react with iodine so we get the dark blue color solution right and this is the class number three that is our test class right where we have added active enzyme we have added active enzyme so this enzyme going to act on starch and will convert the amylose into the simple uh, glucose monomer so uh, the number of molecular starch molecules are reduced which are going to react with our so the color of flash three right is less than your flash number two so you here you can see the color difference between Class 2 and class 3. So 
with this we are ending with the explanation of this practical and uh, we have also show you the results of this practical so whenever this uh, this practical will be in your exam this video going to be help you for that particular practical right so thank you so much for listening me